Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment, and that is correct. Do not adjust your television screens, your mobile screens, your laptop screens, your desktop screens. I am indeed back. Where the hell have I been for the last month and a half? Well, work has been kicking my butt, y'all. I wish this was my full-time job. What a full-time job it would be, but... It doesn't quite pay the bills. My day job pays the bills, and I've had to put in extra time in that lately. But things are finally alleviated, thank God. I also got kidnapped for a little bit by ISIS, but that's not the big problem. The big problem right now is that the Tennessee Titans are going through a hell of an offseason. I mean, people, this is bad. Now, it's not as bad as some people want to make it out to be, and there's still hope. It's called the draft, and it's a great hope. But man, we've had a lot of stuff go down. There's a lot of stuff to discuss. So we're going to break it up into two videos, maybe even three, but two videos primarily. This video and the next video. This video, we're talking about free agency departures and re-signings. Next video, additions. And then after that, I might do like a draft preview thing or maybe looking at more free agents we can get. But I don't know if I'm going to do the free agency thing because it scraps out there at this point. I mean, there's some more good players, but whatever. It's all fan service anyway to just, oh, this kid, Sammy Walker's and Antonio Brown. I mean, that, what kind of discussion is that? So we're not going to do that. But maybe we'll do a draft thing. But today, departures, re-signings, what happened? What is going on with this football team? Well, let's discuss it. And let us begin with Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson is gone. He was cut. He was released from the Tennessee Titans, and I'm not happy about this, people. And if anyone's happy about this, please, please explain your rationale to me. Adoree Jackson was on the books for about $10.5 million. This is a very good number for a number one cornerback. Now, some of you may sit there and tell me, well, MJ, Adoree Jackson's not a number one cornerback, and I would argue when healthy he is, But moreover than that, look, he's shown a lot of potential up to this point. This is the type of rookie that you lead into his fifth-year option and you see what he can do in that contract year. This is when a guy like this ascends. This is the time for a guy like this. I mean, Stephon Gilmore was good in Buffalo. They let him go. He became a pro bowler in New England. A lot of young cornerbacks in this league struggle. They actually turn the corner, and a lot of them, even Stephon Gilmore was a good one. They get even better year five, year six, year seven. You don't cut a guy like this, and then now he's going on to the New York Giants for three years, $39 million. I would have took that deal yesterday. I think that's a pretty good deal, but we had him for $10 million. One year, let's see what he can do. If he balls out, maybe you have to pay him 15. And yeah, that kind of stinks, $15 million a year. But I'll take that because look at our cornerback situation right now. Look at our cornerback situation currently. You're talking about Christian Fulton, who I liked coming out of LSU. What did he do last year? Did he do a bloody thing? Okay, he had an interception. It was a great intercept. Do you trust him moving forward? I like him. Don't get me wrong. I like him. Is he going to hold the mantle, and look, we're going to talk about who we signed in the next video. Who would you rather have, Janoris Jenkins or Dory Jackson? You need to be paying one cornerback on your team $10 million. His name was Adoree Jackson. He was sitting there. He was already in the books for one year. One year proven. This one made no sense to me. Now, we move on to Corey Davis. Okay, so the Corey Davis thing, I'm actually okay with. Now, you guys know my stance on Corey Davis. I like Corey Davis. I wanted Corey Davis back. But the numbers just weren't going to work out. And again, you looked at our cap situation heading into this offseason. And that's why I told you all at the end of the season with my season recap. We're in trouble when it comes to the cap. We only had about $5 million under the cap of when free agency was approaching and we had to make these cuts, we had to let people go and we weren't able to resign people. So I knew we were going to let go of Corey Davis. I warned of this all season long. I knew it was coming. You all knew it was coming. He signs a, what was it, three-year, 37 and a half million dollar contract for the New York Jets. And by the way, about 27 million of that is guaranteed. That's like 66% of the contract. That's ridiculous. That's a high amount. And let me tell you, I'm not sure how well he's going to do in New York. I think Corey Davis is one of those players where he will do really well with a good quarterback. And Ryan Tannehill is a good quarterback, but, you know, 
I don't think Tannehill looked his way enough personally, but let, let's say if you put him with a great quarterback like a Deshaun Watson, who turns Brandon Cooks into, into damn near a pro bowler, right? You put him with Aaron Rodgers, my God. Like, I thought he was going to go somewhere like a Green Bay and then explode. Now I'm not so sure because who knows what the Jets quarterback situation is going to look like. Um, I wish him well. As Donald Trump would say, I wish him well. Um, but, I, you know, it's going to be 50-50 with this guy. You know, it could be Kenny Britt where he has a decent season that kind of flames out. It could be a Derrick Mason situation, although Derrick Mason was much older when he left us. It's going to be interesting. But let me tell you, Adore Jackson is going to do well. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I think he's going to do well. I think he may end up, may end up being a Pro Bowl corner. I, I mean, seriously. I mean, for him to be as good as he was, and he wasn't, you know, a world beater. But still, as good as he was, as young as he was, and also coming out of USC, you guys know, I didn't even like Adoree Jackson as a cover corner. And he was much better rookie season, sophomore season, junior season than I thought he would be. And for us to let him go at this point is frustrating. So the Adoree Jackson uh, release just baffles me. On the books, you know, books-wise, you know, eye-wise, it just doesn't make sense in any facet, any way whatsoever. It didn't make any sense. So moving on from those two, we have Malcolm Butler who we had to release, and apparently they tried to renegotiate the contract, restructure the contract, and get out of the situation, and it just didn't work out. And it was too much money for him. We saved, I want to say, about $10.5 million releasing him. Maybe it was even 12. I can't remember the exact number right now off the top of my head, but it was at least $10 million. And you just had to make this move. He just wasn't worth it at this point. Now, I don't know why you have to go over Dory Jackson too, but whatever. Uh, but he just wasn't worth that number at this point, which is why he's moving on to Arizona, where he's only getting paid one year, six million. Okay, that's more of what he deserved. I would have gave him eight, um, but you know, that's more of what he deserves at this point. I would have loved to have him back for six or eight million, but the number he was at was too much considering our cap situation. But thank you, Malcolm Malcolm Butler, for turning on at the end of this season. We appreciate you for that. And your know, overall for your services in Tennessee, you know, I would say it was decent. It had its ups, it had its downs. It was a little disappointing. A little because I really expected him to be, if not our number one corner, our number two corner for years. And I think it was only like two years and it really wasn't that good. Maybe three. I can't remember the exact year right now. But, you know, overall, it was decent, I guess. All right, so there goes Malcolm Butler. John U. Smith leaves the Tennessee Titans. Now, let me tell y'all about John U. Smith. This number is ridiculous. I like John U. Smith, people. I really do. But John New Smith, for four years, $50 million, $50 million. Who the hell you kidnapped Chelsea? Who the hell you think he kidnapped Chelsea Clinton? I mean, what are we talking about? $50 million for John New Smith? I mean, look, we're talking paying him $12.5 million at the tight end position. And this is a tight end that hasn't even gotten 500 receiving yards in one season. He's getting paid like a top 20 wide receiver. He's getting paid the number three or four tight end in the league. He's not that yet. Maybe he'll be that one day. I mean, maybe. But he's not our best pass catcher at the tight end position. It wasn't even close between him and Anthony Ferks. So Ferks was the one that you trusted to run that 10-yard, 15-yard girl for the first down. You didn't trust Johnny Smith for that. You trusted him to run him up the seam a little bit. You trusted him to catch something out of the backfield and do something with it. You trusted him in, to make stuff happen in space. But he wasn't a complete tight end yet. He doesn't have his complete route tree yet. He's not a natural pass catcher yet. You're paying him $12.5 million. Yeah, you can let him go for that price. That is ridiculous. However, could we have franchise tagged him? Because I think the franchise tag number was $8 million. That number makes more sense to me. That one's right on the edge because it just depends on if you do bring it back on that number, you know, who are you also going to have to let go, you know? That one was like right on the edge for me. I think he's worth seven, eight million, not 12 and a half. I mean, it's ridiculous. And yes, he's a fantastic blocker and he's a huge reason why Derek can be ran for 2,000 yards this season. Number's too high, $12.5 million a year. You can have that New England. Good luck with that. And they re and they got Hunter Henry for damn near the same million per year. I, they're paying $25 million at the tight end position. Yeah, I'm good on that. Now, I don't like our tight end situation right now, <laughs> considering that. Although, it might surprise you. It might. We're going to get into that as we move along here. But John U. Smith, yeah, for $12.5 million, uh, yeah, you can go. I'm not going to miss you at that number. Although I will miss your run ball capabilities because those were fantastic. 
So from there, we have three more. Adam Humphreys, we knew, well, I thought this might have been coming because I think his, his dead cap was about half of his yearly salary, like his yearly salary was, let's say, nine million. You know, to cut him, we saved about four and a half with a dead cap of about four and a half million. That's rough numbers there, but that's about that's about what it was. I thought for you know half and half dead cap versus actual salary, we would keep him. You know, apparently not. We're getting rid of him, and this is how you know it's a little ridiculous. Okay, so Adam Humphries, we signed. Was it now two years ago? Okay, Adam Humphries got paid nine million dollars a year. Adam Humphries was a slot receiver at best, and we knew that. Corey Davis is getting paid about 13, 12, 12 and a half million a year. Okay, Corey Davis has way more potential than Adam Humphreys, and we're adjusting for inflation. Okay, now the salary cap had to go down due to COVID. But we paid a guy that Adam Humphreys, we knew was going to be our number three wide receiver. The Jets are paying Corey Davis, who they hope is going to be their number one wide receiver, and we got Adam Humphreys for only $3 million less a year two years ago. This doesn't quite make sense. The Adam Humphreys contract was a bad contract. At the time, I liked it. You know, we need to stop doing this. We're fans. We just like signing anything and anybody. At the time, I should have said, wait, why are we signing this slot wide receiver to $9 million a year? I should have stopped right there and said, boy, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Although, granted, at the time, we had Corey Davis on the rookie deal. I don't think we had drafted yet. We definitely had not drafted AJ Brown yet. And we drafted him, actually, that draft. So that helped. So, you know, it was okay because that was the only wide receiver we were paying. So I'll grant that. But still, looking back, the contract didn't make sense. And speaking of things that did not make sense, Dennis Kelly released from the Tennessee Times. Okay, now, th this is where I said, what the hell are we doing? This is where I said, what the hell are we doing? This is Eudora Jackson. How do you let go of Dennis Kelly? A right tackle, starting right tackle, good starting right tackle. I mean, he had top 10 right tackle production this year, maybe even top eight, top seven. You could argue. He was a part of a 2,000 rushing yard unit. And he's a swing tackle that can play both the left and the right in a pinch. You're getting him for $7 million a year. Do you know how good of a deal that is? That is so freaking good. The only way you're getting a better tackle than that for a lower price is if you draft one which we just did. And let me tell you, we need a tackle, but my God, if I sit on draft day and I hear the Tennessee Titans select tackle, and I don't care what his name is, unless if it's Petty Swell, who somehow dropped from number three overall. I mean, unless if it's him, I will, I might blow my head off. I mean, I just can't, ha I, what is going on? Um, we, we drafted Conklin. We let go of Conklin. Isaiah Wilson's a disaster. We're going to get into him in a moment. I mean, what are we doing? I mean, you have to just look at this situation and wonder. But Dennis Kelly, I mean, I don't understand how you let go of this guy. And then we bring in Kendall Lamb. We're going to talk about Kendall Lamb. Yeah, it's for less money. The difference there, give me Dennis Kelly, who we know is better, who we know fits with our team, who we know can put the left and right tackle position. Lamb is okay. It's pretty good value for Lamb. We're going to talk about Lamb. But you should have just kept Kelly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, dog. I, that, that would make no sense to me. Not at all. And then Kenny Vaccaro, okay, fine. You know, it wasn't that much that was said with Kenny Vaccaro. But look, we know that Amani Hooker has that next up anyway. He played well last season. Go ahead and put Amani Hooker into that slot. That makes sense to me. That's fine. But this idea of getting rid of Dennis Kelly, it's, it's not registering. It doesn't make sense to me. So, with that said, those are all the people that left. Blew a bit of a gasket when I saw Dory Jackson and Dennis Kelly. I mean, Corey Davis, we expected. John o. Smith, we pretty much expected. Uh, but my God, Dennis Kelly and Adore Jackson. Wow, wow. Okay, so there are some resignings for this team, thank God. And the most notable of which is Jayon Brown. So Jayon Brown returns to the Titans on about a $5.5 million deal. Great value for a pretty good inside linebacker in this league. I'm taking that every day of the week. Thank God we got a good deal out of somebody because God knows we haven't been doing much of that. So Jayon Brown, thank God he comes back for a cheap deal because luckily he had a bit of an injury at the end of last season. I mean, not lucky for him. I'm sorry, bud. But luckily for us, and he is healthy from that now. So, you know, eh, we got good value. I'll, I'll take good value when I can get it, people. I'm sorry. So we get good value there. Tight ends, Anthony Ferkser and Jeff Swain return to the team. And here's the thing with our tight end situation. Now, Anthony Furter is my guy, okay? Um, is he a number one tight end? Eh. 
but uh, look, he's a great pass catcher, okay? And that's a lot, and that's good. I can see him even catching 500 yards, maybe even 600, maybe. Can he block? Yeah, not really. Uh, you know, not a great blocker at all, which is kind of important for this team that where Derrick Henry is the main guy. Now, if we can supplement Ferguson with great blocking tight ends, and we currently have Jeff Swain, who's a pretty good one. I think Michael Poole is still in the market. Correct me if I'm wrong. Pretty sure he's on the market. And look out, and I'm biased here because I went to school with this man, but look out for Jared Pinkney. He's my guy. He was released by the Falcons last season. Excuse me, but I still think this guy has great potential, and I'm not sleeping on him, man, because let me tell you, our Vanderbilt offense was terrible, and he was the only good thing about it damn near. So look out for Jared Pinkney. I'm just going to say that. Just, and you guys know, I hate talking about the practice squad, the lower tier players. If they don't do anything, don't talk to me about it. I don't want to hear it. But Jared Pinkney, I'm telling you right now, just look out. Just, just look out. So tight end position there. Moving on from that, we also have Ty Sembrio and Kari Blasting Game returning. Kari Blasting Game, someone else I went to school with. Uh, I guess this means that the situation, you know, with him and the girl is nothing really to worry about. So that's good to know. And then I guess, you know, Tyson Bray, look, he's a fine backup swing tackle. I guess that gave him reason to feel like they could let go of Dennis Kelly. But I disagree regardless. All right. So we also had this. Let's get a little, let's have some fun. Isaiah Wilson. And this should be the last time I discuss this man unless if he dies, which, oh, God. Uh, I'm going to pray against, but man, the way he's at it. This man, we traded him away. My God. We traded him away to the Miami Dolphins. And I, on Twitter, this is why I need to follow my Twitter, at the MJ Take. I was laughing my ass off. I was laughing my ass off from here to Knoxville. Because, my goodness, I almost went to Miami to join him, to laugh with him. What a robbery. You're going to trade him. And look, I mean, we swapped seventh-round picks. That's basically nothing. They may end up winning the trade. But... You know, because they might end up having more value when it comes to the seven-round picks. You know, although it will be a year later. But, my God, there's no chance in hell Isaiah Wilson was going to keep his head on straight in Miami. I gave it a month. It lasted two weeks. This guy had lean on his Instagram story. And then the next day, he was gone. Released. And there he goes. Forever. I mean, I think someone might sign him again one more time. And then that's it. He's done. And I've never seen anything like this. I mean, what an absolute disaster. I mean, we have seen some busts. We have seen some baboons run through Nashville, Tennessee. Pac-Man Jones. Redeemed. Love him now. Vince Young. Redeemed. For the most part, love him now. Jake Locker, he's not really a clown, but my God, he's a loser. Where is he at? We've seen some bust in Tennessee. My God. And this guy is on top of the list by far. He's the biggest bust I've ever seen. Antonio Brown doesn't even compare to this guy. This guy's on another level. He got arrested apparently a month ago, two months ago, maybe a month and a half. No one even knew about it. He was driving 140 miles an hour. The police said... Well, we ain't going to get into a high-speed chase because we might end up in an accident. Just let him go. We'll get him later. What is going on with this guy? I know he's on. He's, he has anxiety and depression and everything else, like 60% of millennials in this world and Gen Z, whatever he is. But, dude, you got to get it together, man. Get whatever rehab help that you need. I'm praying for you. But, man, I mean, you want to talk about blowing a bag. I mean, incredible. I mean, give me an opportunity. Hey, we need a wide receiver. Let me go run routes with Nick Westbrook at Keeney. Okay, let me go do some things. Because if this is the level of effort that some of these NFL players are giving, my goodness. Isaiah Wilson, with a stint in Miami, my friend, you're done. All right, so with that said, that's going to do it today as we discuss the Tennessee Titans' departures in free agency. And these departures hurt. Yet again, I still believe there's hope, and it's called the draft. And I think this is where John Robinson is going to have to dig deep and find some real hidden gems. And he could do it. He's done it in the past. But boy, he's on the clock now. And one more thing. Looking at the cap situation. Who are our highest paid players this year? 
Ryan Tannehill, okay, it's worth the quarterback position, but it's $29 million. Hurts. Kevin Byard. And Taylor Lewan. All the extensions made sense at the time, but now they don't look too good. We're going to have to see some results from those three players big time. And Tannehill, I'm just talking about the playoffs. I need you to win us a game in the playoffs. We're going to discuss this for weeks and months to come. Until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.